Give me your letter grade on the Mavericks Kristaps Porzingis trade. <laughs> Say F. Oh, right I know. I know you don't love it. Say F. I'm gonna go D plus. D plus. Um, now look on, on the surface. Does this team get better theoretically? In my mind, no. Uh, for this season, because you lose your defensive anchor. Well, people will say Kevin. The Mavs have been playing defensively pretty well without. Poor thing is, and to that I say, yeah, you're right, but at the same time, this was also a team that moved off of potentially getting Miles Turner because they liked what they got in Porzingis defensively. So I think they'll be missing a defensive anchor and a shot block and a rim protector in the middle. Uh, while he wasn't shooting the, the three-point shot very well this season, you liked what you were seeing in terms of the post touches and some of the things he was doing from a playmaking standpoint. So... I was just really confused by the trade, given what you got in return to players who, you know, in Bertans, who has struggled, you know, mightily and fell out of favor as far as the rotation in, in Washington. And then, you know, Dinwiddie, you know, while you like what he brings from a secondary playmaker standpoint, his ability to stay healthy, uh, can he get back and rebuild that value that made him such you know, a valuable piece when he was out in Brooklyn, and can he regain that? That, to me, is going to be the ultimate question. And also, my man doesn't like to play off the ball either. Struggle with that in Washington, you know, with you know Bradley Beal and Kyle Kuzma even to an extent, as The Athletic reported today. And that's not something that, if you're a Mavs fan, that should make you all that excited given – some of the struggles that he had even playing with other stars like Bradley Beal out there. Okay, KG, then where does the fit then? Where is, And again, there might not be a fit according to you, but how would you, you know, you're out there with those guys every day, you watch every game, you see the rotations and stuff. How how do these guys fit in the rotations? So for Denwitty to start off with, you know, not necessarily a great defensive player, but to me a guy that would be coming off of the bench uh, and filling that secondary scoring role, you know, being able to lead a second unit to provide some offensive punch and scoring. I think that's what his role will be here. And for Bertans, you know, guys that goes, you know, 6'10", you know, in the past has been able to be a really good three-point shooter, you know, providing you some spacing as a big man that can shoot, you know, from deep. So, you know, that to me is what you'll see initially from those two as far as their role is concerned. You know, with Tim Hardaway Jr. going out the way that he did, he was supposed to be that guy that provides you that off-the-bench kind of scoring and instant offense. That's what Dinwiddie's going to have to be now as a playmaker and as a shot creator that can get his own shot and be able to score. And the Bretons, his ability to stretch the floor, uh, hopefully as he gets better in terms of his health, that will be something that can be a valuable asset for the Mavericks. I'm about to put you in a terrible spot. Get him. But here we go. Go. Do you think mm -hmm. Luca had something to do with this trade? No. No, I, I don't. Um, I mean, what it does say is that, you know, if nothing else, it's very now clearly his team. And what they are going to try and do to build around him is what will remain to be seen in the future. You know, you split – Porzingis' contract in half with Dinwiddie and Breton to try and hopefully make it easier, especially if they rebuild, you know, their trade value going forward, that you can get, you know, guys that can be much better and more movable contracts. Tim Hardaway Jr.'s contract is also extremely movable. He has a descending contract that once he comes back and rebuilds his value, that may be another piece that you can move. But this team is going to try and build around Luka Doncic, and I think the most important part about all of this is that Nico Harrison in this front office got Mark Cuban to, in theory, admit something that I didn't think that they would be capable of doing, which is admitting that the Porzingis trade didn't work. I don't necessarily think that they gave it enough chance this season, especially given how we have seen when they've been healthy together, but, but people will say, They've been given it long enough to try and work. So for Nico Harrison in this front office to get Cuban to, in theory, admit his failure on this trade to me says a lot about what this front office is trying to do and, show, and shape and mold uh, the Mavericks going forward and the image that they think can be best suited around Luka Doncic.
Speaking of Mark Cuban, it's uh, KG Kevin Gray with you here on 105 through the Fan Mavs reporter, fan host. Uh, what do you think of Mark's quote that he gave Brian Broaddus that KP was not as good of a fit in Jay Kidd's system as he was with Rick? I tend to agree with it because I thought the best use of Chris Porzingis was as, as a stretch five, his ability to shoot the ball from the three-point line to bring the kind of spacing to the floor that would allow Luka to be able to create and not have lanes clogged and be able to have things muddied up in the lane. You know, that's the, I always thought that was the best use of Porzingis. And at times you saw with his post play, you know, Maxi Kleba and Dwight Powell, a lot of bumping into each other in the lane, not necessarily the kind of spacing that you would want. And sometimes that made the offense a little jumbled. So in a lot of ways, I agree with Cuban in that sense that, you know, I think he fit better in what Carlisle had the vision for. Kid wanted to get him back to some of the things that he was doing in New York with the post touches and being able to create, you know, his own shot as far as, you know, looking for, you know, those kinds of things within the post. And at times it looked really good, especially early on in the season. But Cuban, I think, ultimately is right in that assessment.